Hi, and welcome to my Match 3 Framework project for the Unreal Engine 4. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the Match 3 Framework by creating a brand new project. While I get the project going, let me tell you why I made this project and what you can expect to find inside. My goal was to create a system for users to create their own Match 3 levels. My intentions were targeted towards professionals as well as casual users. For a market audience, having the work cut out is always a big money saver as you can focus your time elsewhere. And a Valentine's Day Match 3 level filled with hearts will sway any casual gamer. The first step to getting started is by dropping the files inside of your project's content folder. With that done, I also provide a link to download sample art assets if you do not have your own yet. Credits for the art goes to Vicky Wenderlich and Kevin McLeod. These sample files should not be used for shipping purposes. Back in our project, we should create a new empty level. While I add the fundamental parts to our level and adjust the project settings, let's talk about the content inside the Match 3 framework. Inside, two blueprints above all handle the gameplay. The M3 main game and the game slot blueprints. But along with them, some bonus blueprints are provided, such as the score tracker and save game system. The M3 main game handles all the core mechanics of the game, while the game slot blueprints handles the individual game pieces. What makes the M3 main game so powerful is all the exposed variables that directly affect the game. I will cover those more in detail later. We're almost ready to begin. Note that it will take almost as much time to create a level as it did to get the project set up. The first time you drag out the M3 main game blueprint, it may take a moment for it to load. With the M3 main game blueprint in place, we can already try it out without any art implemented yet. The tool will use numbers to represent the game pieces instead of images until we add art. First things first, let's turn off these numbers. Now, let's make sure that we got our sample folder inside of our Match 3 Framework folder. It won't work properly if it's placed anywhere else. Inside the sample folder, you will find ready to use materials that you can simply drag and drop onto the pro proper exposed variables. I did not add the specific selected materials and by doing so the game will use the default selected material. Later on I demonstrate a level that utilizes specific selected materials. No game is a game without sound. Without going into too much details, the exposed variables are a formidable force. You can easily edit your play field on the fly by changing values. Changing the grid size in grid slots is only the beginning. Here I demonstrate how you can turn on and off grid slots and turn them all back on globally. Now let's create a simple level layout to try out. Let's give it a try while using five game pieces. Now 
let's set it up to work with 8 game pieces. By changing the game piece count to 8, 3 new slots appeared in the game piece material. Let's add some new materials in. The same changes occurred in the selected materials section. Now when we play, we'll have brand new game pieces in our game. Another interesting feature is the ability to automatically fit any viewport size. By default, it is set to fit with the landscape scheme. It is possible to change a camera orthographic width value to work with a portrait scheme. But the score tracker may need adjustments in that case. You can adjust the view layout easily by offsetting the camera, the background and the UI. By doing so, you can shift the game grid anywhere in the viewport. You can choose where the score tracker should be displayed. Talking about the score tracker, let's add some stars to better display the player progress. While checking out the stars, we were lucky enough to see the shuffle mechanic in action. Because every game piece is randomly generated, unless specified otherwise, the game logic can recognize when there is no possible move to be done by the player. In that case, it shuffles. Scaling is also very easy to achieve without any hassle. Here I demonstrate the move and magical variables, where the user set the pace of the game. Next we have the score variables and score combo multipliers. The fall match variable dictates how long it takes for new matches to get destroyed, to give the player a chance to see his new matches before they disappear. Now let's take a look at the level progression system.
And just like that, you can already begin to iterate between levels. Before ending the video, I will showcase two levels, one of which uses the selected material feature and the other that uses 3D spheres as game pieces. Hopefully you will enjoy using my Match 3 Framework tool as much as I enjoyed making it.